Hello dear students, myself Dr. Sachin Gurule, Assistant Professor from Department of Zoology, KTHM College, Nasik. So in this video, we are going to learn the practical belongs to the zoology and semester 4th, belongs to the section 1st that is animal diversity 4 and the practical number 5 that is museum study of class mammalia. So in which we are going to learn the three animals for their classification that is rat, shrew and the bat and also we are going to discuss the general characteristic features of the class mammalia. So let's start with the first of all what is meant by class mammalia. Now that mammalia word is coming from the latin word and the word is a mammal meaning the breast. Okay. So, the most characteristic feature of all the mammals is the presence of the mammary gland or presence of the breast in case of the female and these are useful for providing the nourishment to the young ones. So, the young ones of all this group that is mammalia they are nourished on the milk which is produced by the mammary glands of the mother. So here you can see in the two diagram. So this is a deer, female deer. She is giving nourishment to her cub uh, via the mammary gland and that is, is responsible for producing the milk. So which is the most important characteristic feature for all kinds of the mammals. Okay. So in addition to that, they has a several features which is quite different from that of the other rest of the phylum. So let's see one by one the general characteristic features of mammalia. Now first of all, the body of the mammalian organism, they are differentiated into the four parts that is head, neck, trunk and tail. But again, if you see the various animals which are included into the class mammalia, they have the variable body shape. So here in this diagram, you can see the few of the examples belongs to that mammalia. So in every case, you will found that their body shape is greatly variable as this class mammalia, it contains the more heterogeneous group of animals. And these are highly evolved animals compared to the animals belongs to the other phylum. The next characteristic feature, again, the exoskeleton is in the form of hairs. So each and every mammals, if you see on their integument, they are always provided with the exoskeletal derivatives and that exoskeletal part in case of this, all mammals is in the form of hair. So, you will found the hairs all over the body of the organisms. And these hairs are act as an insulator for maintaining the constant body temperature. And hence, all these organisms belongs to that mammalia. They are capable of maintaining their constant body temperature irrespective of the environmental temperature. Hence, they are known as homeothermic animals. Homeo means even and thermic means temperature. Means they can able to maintain the constant or even body temperature irrespective of the environmental fluctuation in the temperature. So, these homeothermic organisms, they are also known as the warm-blooded organism. But instead of warm-blooded organism, we should use the concept only homeotherms. That is the capability of organism to maintain their constant body temperature. Okay. The next characteristic feature is the skin is a thick, is a glandular and they are provided with a sebaceous gland. So, gland is, uh, the skin is quite thick in case of all the mammals and they are always provided with a various kinds of the glands and one of the important gland which is present into the integument of the mammal is a sebaceous gland which is concerned with the secretion of the sebum. Okay. So, this is again a characteristic one. Now, mammary glands which is the most important or the most distinctive characters of the mammals is always present 
which are actually the modified epidermal glands and that modified epidermal glands are concerned with the secretion of the milk okay but this mammary gland present in both male as well as female but in case of male they are inactive while in case of females they are active particularly into the puberty and these are responsible for secretion of the milk and that milk is useful for feeding their young ones so the presence of mammary gland we have already seen which is the prime character for all the animals belongs to the class mammalia okay the next character all these mammalian organisms they are tetrapods tetrapods in the sense they are having a pair of four and hind limbs so there are total four legs are there two are into the pectoral girdle and two are lies into the pelvic girdle so which are respectively known as the forelimb and the hind limb so hence they are known as the tetrapod as they are walking on the four legs now limbs are always pentadactyl so here if you see the few examples of that mammalia if you see the limbs the limbs are always pentadactyl pentadactyl in the sense they are having the five fingers or the five digits so in each case so here you can see the diagram of the man the man you can able to recognize the five digits then if you see again the cat any kind of the cat is ranging from our house cat or you can take an example of the tiger also so all they are also provided with a such a five digits okay then again this is the example of a well so in case of well the limbs are get modified into the flippers and but that flippers if you see the internally they are also provided with a five digits then this is the example of the bat here you can see the there are total five digits are there which is enlarged and which are going to give the support to the special thing that is potassium for the purpose of flying adaptation as well as either <clears throat> the nails are always present so here you can see the nails are present on their uh, digits or maybe that nails are get modified into the hoops so here you can see the hoops which is generally found into the herbi uh, uh, herbivorous uh, large animals uh, such as a cattle deer zebra wendabies okay buffalo you will always found such a kind of the hoops on their legs so which is again a characteristic features then limbs are variously adapted for the purpose of walking for the purpose of running burrowing swimming flying etc as i have already tell you that the class mammalia contains the more heterogeneous group and they are showing a various adaptation so that limbs in most of the purposes it is useful for the purpose of walking and the running if you see the animals like a deer wendabies then uh, zebra their limbs are useful for the purpose of running or you can take the example of the horse then certain mammals they are burrowing and for that purpose to living into the burrows the limbs are useful for the purpose of making the burrow into the sand or into the particular substratum so at that time limbs are useful for the purpose of burrowing now there are certain aquatic mammals also for example you can take the example of the well so here the limbs are useful for the purpose or modified for the purpose of swimming and you can take the example of the bat where their limbs are get modified for the purpose of flying so in this way the limbs they shows a various adaptation to perform a different kinds of the functions such as walking running burrowing swimming and the flying okay the next character if you see the skull skull has a large cranial cavity so you can see the skull of the human here and it has a large cranial cavity which encloses the brain so brain is always well developed among all the mammals and if you see the number of bones belongs to that skull the number of bones are greatly reduced among all the mammals okay so lower jaw this is a lower jaw and this lower jaw is reduced to a single bone so here you can found, uh, find here so this is a condyle 
which by which this lower jaw is going to attach to the main region of the skull and this lower jaw is usually get uh, reduced and it is made up of only the single bone so this is also a characteristic feature you will found into the skull of uh, all the mammals then teeth are heterodont thicodont and the diphenodont so let's see one by one first of all what is mean by heterodont heterodont dentition in the sense in case of mammals you will found a different types of teeth for example if you take the example of human the front teeth with the help of which we can able to cut or take a bite of the food material which is known as a incisors so next to the incisor there are generally the canines that canines are useful for the tearing purpose then then after comes the premolar and the molar so there are four types of teeth generally found among the um, mammals organism so there four as they are belongs to the four types and they are referred as heterodont then second one the teeth are thicodont thicodont in the sense the teeth are they are lodged into the sockets of the upper as well as lower jaw okay so when teeth are inserted into the jaw's bone such a kind of the teeth are referred as the thicodont type of teeth and they are also known as a diphyodont diphyodont in the sense in most of the mammals the teeth first of all the, the whatever first set of the teeth is there if it is worn out then the new set of the teeth can be replaced so teeth they are generally arises a twice hence it is referred as the diphyodont so in this way the teeth found into the mammals they are heterodont having the different types thicodont as they are lodged into the bone sockets of jaw sockets of the upper and lower jaw and diphyodont as they are arises it twice in their referred as a diphyodont then buccal cavity it contains a salivary gland so large salivary gland is present which is responsible for giving out the secretion of the saliva and if you see the tongue tongue is mobile one among the all the mammals then the larynx contains well developed vocal cords and these vocal cords are very important for the purpose of sound production so here you can see uh, the <coughs> view of the larynx so this larynx is made up of a different kinds of the cartilage so the different kinds of the cartilage they are going to form the sound box and these vocal cords are when the air are passes through that vocal cords is responsible for producing a sound which is again a characteristic feature of the mammals so in the larynx the glottis is guarded by the epiglottis so here in the diagram you can see this is the epiglottis and the glottis is uh, um, uh, generally guarded with the help of this epiglottis so this is the structure of larynx you will found among the mammals the next character is the elementary canal leads to the anus and cloaca is absent cloaca in the sense the cloaca is a generally the common opening for the digestive urinary as well as the reproductive system which is generally found into the other organism particularly if you take the example of the fishes you will never found a separate opening for all these systems and at that time we referred that opening as a cloaca but among the mammals the anus is always there anus is nothing but a separate opening for the digestive system and for the reproductive and the urinary system there are the different opening or the different orifice is there so so digestive system is starts with the mouth it leads into the long elementary canal particularly among the uh, herbivorous organism in the carnivorous organism the length of the elementary canal is generally short and this elementary canal is ends into the anus so this is again a characteristic feature then if you see the lungs lungs are well developed as all the mammals are almost all the mammals they are terrestrial and they are air breathing okay few of the animals belongs to that mammalia though they are living into the water or they are aquatic mammals but still they also provided with a highly developed lungs and that with the help of lungs they can breathe the air for getting the 
oxygen and removing the carbon dioxide so which is again the features among the mammals the next character is the heart is four chamber and that four chamber so here you can see the diagram of the heart so it consists of the two auricles and two ventricle and there is the complete separation of the oxygenated and the deoxygenated blood you will found among the mammals which is again a characteristic features so thus there are total four chambers two are auricles and two are ventricle and these auricles and the ventricles they are separated by a septum so there is a complete separation and the circulation is referred as the double circulation okay then diaphragm diaphragm is separate the thoracic cavity from that of the abdominal cavity so here in this diagram if you see so this region of the chest is referred as a thoracic cavity which contains the cavity which is known as a thoracic cavity while the abdominal region the abdominal region contains a cavity which is known as a abdominal cavity now this thoracic and abdominal cavity it is get separated by with the help of this diaphragm so diaphragm is always there and which is the boundary or which is responsible for separating the thoracic cavity from that of the abdominal cavity so this is also in the another characteristic feature the next one concern with the brain so brain in among all the mammals is highly developed so here you can see the examples of your brain for example this is the brain of human this is the brain of elephant dolphin now this is the macaque that is gor um, gorilla mouse cat and dog now this is overall the structure of the brain and if you see the brain is highly developed among all the mammals and particularly they are provided with a large cerebrum and the cerebellum okay the optic lobes they are divided into the carpora quadra gemina and the carpora collapsum connects the two walls of the cerebrum so which is again a characteristic so optic lobes they are always divided into the carpora quadra gemina so they are often they are provided with a furrow or the depression which is responsible for separation of the cerebrum also and the optic lobes also okay then you will found always the 12 pairs of cranial nerves so the cranial nerves are the nerves which are directly originating from the brain and they are going to give a uh, give the innervation into the various organs in the head region and all such nerves are referred as the cranial nerves and among the um, <clears throat> many vertebrate they are provided with a cranial nerves and in case of mammals there are total 12 cranial nerves you will found among the brain of the mammals then eyes they are provided with a movable eyelid so here you can see they can able to blink their eyes is due to only position of the movable eyelid so movable eyelid is another characteristic feature then again if you see the external ear pinna the external ear pinna is also movable in many animals okay so the middle ear has the ear ossicle and inner ear has a membranous labyrinth so this is a membranous labyrinth which is containing a different kinds of the semicircular canal so there are vertical semicircular canal then lateral canals are there then utriculus is there so which is responsible for forming the internal layer uh, or it is also referred as the membranous labyrinth so here in this diagram you can see this is a ear pinna which is known as a external ear and this is the cavity which Uh, joins the external ear with that of the internal ear and this structure is known as a membranous labyrinth or the internal ear and this is the magnified view of the internal ear which is provided with a semicircular canals and this semicircular canal containing the fluid which is the one of the organ concerned with the balancing so the membranous labyrinth is also well developed among the mammals then as far as the excretory system is concerned the excretory system is consist of the well developed kidneys and obviously the kidneys are metanephric or one can say the most developed kidneys you will found among the mammals and these kidneys are metanephric type 
and ureter opens into the urinary bladder. So there is a temporary storage of the urine into the sac-like structure which is known as a urinary bladder. So you will found the urinary bladder. So urine is get formed into the kidneys and via this ureter that urine is traveled into the urinary bladder where it is temporary stored and it is passed out uh, or it is thrown outside the body via the small opening which is known as a urethra. So this is about the excretory system. Then as far as the sexes is concerned, the sexes are always separate. So here you can see the male and female are completely different animal and um, or the different individual and they are provided with the paired gonads. Paired gonad in the sense there are pair of testes in the male and there are pair of ovaries among the females. Okay, but the, if you see the gonads, the male gonads are generally found on outside the abdominal cavity and they are generally descendant into the scrotal sac, which is again a characteristic feature. But if you see the gonads of the female, the female gonads are obviously they are the abdominal one that is they are lies within the abdomen but it, in case of the testes of the male which is the male gonad they are descendant into the spatial sac which is known as a scrotal sac then copulatory organs are always present into the male which is commonly known as a penis and they are mm, uh, useful for the purpose of copulation that is transferring the spermatozoa into the female genital tract during the uh, coitus and after that they are following the fertilization and that fertilization is internal means the fertilization take place within the body of female hence it is referred as the internal fertilization so all mammals they show the internal fertilization then all in this well except the prototherian are the viviparous prototherian so these are the examples of few prototherian organism so that prototherians are also known as a main um, Monotrim. So here you can see the examples of the duck bill platypus is there. Then this one is the anteater is there. Okay. So these are the mammals. They are not showing a viviparity, but instead they are provided with a capability of laying the eggs. So these are also known as a egg laying mammals. So except this prototherian organism, all other mammals they are viviparous that is they are directly giving the birth to their young ones the next character is embryo develops within a uterus of the female among almost all the mammal except the monotremes again these are the monotremes or the prototherian which are the egg laying mammals where the development of their embryo is take place within the egg as they are egg laying mammal while the rest of all the mammals they are provided with the viviparity and in the viviparity the development of the embryo is take place within a womb or one can say the uteri of the female and this is always responsible for forming the placenta which gives the nourishment to the developing embryo so which is a most generality you would found among the mammals so this is about the different general or the silent characteristic features of the class mammalia so then let's see the examples so few examples of the class mammalia you can see the tachyglossus which is known as a spiny and eater now this is a prototherian or the monotrim organism which are egg laying mammal then second example you can see the or ornithorhynchus the ornithorhynchus is commonly known as a duckbill platypus so these are also the monotremes and they are egg laying organism then another example is the didelphis which is commonly known as a opossum so this opossum they are arboreal animals they are living on the trees so they are also the examples of the mammals then the rodentia you can see the ratus ratus which is commonly known as a rat then orictolagus uh, uh, that is commonly known as the rabbit which are the canoe organisms and they are also the well-known group of the mammal then there are certain herbivorous uh, animal large herbivorous animal equus uh, which is commonly known as a zebra then you can see the uh, macropus macropus commonly known as a kangaroo which is the native of the australia these are also the examples of the mammals now these are the marsupial mammal actually kangaroo is a marsupial mammal where uh, they uh, have the marsupium or special pouch in which 
their babies they are generally lodged which is located here exactly into the abdominal region which is a very special feature among the kangaroos then the rhesus rhesus macacus which is commonly known as a monkey they are also the examples of the mammals then panthera which is commonly known as a tiger or panthera tigris which is commonly known as a tiger so these are also the top carnivore mammals and uh, not least actually the human being itself is an example of the mammalia so this is about the general characteristic features of the mammalia and their examples okay now we are going to learn the three animals for their classification so first of all the let's say ratus ratus which is commonly known as a rat now systematic position so this ratus ratus is belongs to the phylum quadrata is reason for that phylum quadrata is presence of notochord that triploblastic organism there there are three germ layers then the, they are two silomate organisms so body cavity two body cavity is present all these are the reason for phylum quadrata then sub phylum vertebrata the reasons are notochord is supplemented or replaced by the vertebral column as the development proceeds or into the adult stage you will uh, found uh, that particularly the notochord is completely replaced into the vertebral column then body is divisible into the head neck trunk and tail which is the usual body division of all the vertebrate organism okay then division is gnathostomata gnatha in the sense jaws and stomata means mouth opening so mouth opening they are provided with a jaws so true jaws and paired limbs are present then they are fish like in appearance so, so these are the examples uh, or the reasons for the gnathostomata then super class tetrapoda tetrapoda in the sense four footed so they are provided with a four feet or the limbs the two are the four limbs and two are hind limbs hence they are referred as a tetrapod the another reason is they are terrestrial organism <clears throat> then few are aquatic also the respiration is primarily with the help of lungs but in addition to the lungs in certain mammals the uh, respiration is also driven with the help of uh, the skin that is cutaneous respiration but very few examples of the mammals they are showing such a kind of the respiration but the lungs are primarily the build for the purpose of respiration then the organisms are maybe aquatic terrestrial arboreal or the aerial organisms and skin is usually dry and qualified and they are provided with this different glands also so all these are the reason for superclass tetrapoda then class mammalia mammalia they are characterized by presence of the mammary gland which is the most important characteristic feature for nourishing the young ones which is the prime character and additional characters are they are hair clad means they are provided with a body hair as an exoskeletal part Okay. then they are homeothermic organism in the sense the warm blooded organism we can uh, say they can able to maintain the constant body temperature hence they are referred as homeotherms then there belongs to the order rodentia the rodentia these are containing the small ganoing mammals ganoing mammals in the sense they are always provided with the teeth and with the help of the teeth they are always showing the ganoing activity and hence they are referred as the ganoing mammals now each jaw with one pair of long rootless and chisel like incisors growing throughout the life and for that purpose they are and his uh, with the help of this uh, chisel like incisors they are always showing the ganoing activity and the canines are absent among the rodentia so these are the reason for order rodentia the genus is ratus and species is ratus so i think there is no need to explain the characteristic of rat because since childhood you are always seeing the rat but again if you see the body body is divisible into the head leg trunk and the long tail okay so approximately their uh, head and trunk is ranges from 16 to 22 centimeter and tail is even longer than or about uh, the tail is uh, about 19 centimeter long or even in some cases the tail is longer than that uh, 19 centimeters also now these are the dioecious animal males are longer and weigh more than that of the females okay so females are 
uh, smaller then it is extremely successful and has the versatile habit and habitat and they are always found into the urban suburban or even agricultural fields and most importantly these rats are act as a very important major agricultural pest of the stored grains okay and they are responsible for causing a severe destruction to the uh, stored grains also and not only the stored grain they are also use uh, they are also responsible for the uh, gaining the uh, different goods which are kept into the household so they are responsible for causing a considerable damage so this is about the first animal that is ratus ratus then second one is a sorex now sorex is commonly known as a shrew now if you see the classification so classification of the sorex or shrew is very similar to that of the first of all rat up to the class mammalia just they differ into the order now order of the rat is a rodentia but the order of the sorex or shrew is known as or is uh, the insectivora now insectivora in the sense the reason because these are the primitive mammals with long pointed snout so if you see the snout the snout is quite longer than that of the uh, rat but if you see the other features of the body the other features are very much resembles with that of the rodentia okay but these are not rodentia these are the insectivora as they are feeding on the insects okay insectivora insecti means insect hora means feeder okay so they are feeding on the insects then the feet is plantigrade okay so they walk on the whole um, planted foot and this kind of the uh, feet is referred as a plantigrade then usually they are provided with a five toes they are provided with a claws molar teeth they are pointed pig like cusp for the insect feeding so molars they are generally provided with a pointed region the genus is the sorex and commonly known as a shrew in marathi it is also known as ichisundri okay so uh, that <coughs> shrew and the rat though they are resembles with one another in great respect but you can easily differentiate between the rat and the shrew with the help of this pointed snout and but they majorly differ in the order the order of the rat is rodentia while the order of the shrew or chisundri is the insectivora so this is about the sorex and if you see the characteristic feature again they are provided with the head the neck trunk and the tail region they are provided with a very pointed snout here okay so which is often uh, visible the same glands are located on the sides of their bodies so as their eyesight is generally poor they rely on hearing and smell to locate their prey particularly the insects so they are particularly feeds on the insects and they are also feeding on the earthworm as they are feeding on the insects so in that way we can say the shrews they are economically important for a human being as they are responsible for controlling the population of the insects or the insects are their natural enemies or is acting as a food so this organism they are actually useful for the human being so this is about few characteristic features of the sorex which is commonly known as a shrew in marathi is known as a chisundri okay the next example that is cyanopterus now cyanopterus is commonly known as a fruit bat so these are the herbivorous bat again if you see the systematic position the classification is exactly same to that of the previous two examples of the class mammalia now this cyanopterus which is commonly known as a fruit bat they are belongs to the order chiroptera now this chiroptera is the only single order belongs to the mammalia they contains the animals which are capable of flying and hence they are often referred as the flying mammals so they this is the only single order where you will found the flying mammals Okay. the four limbs here they are modified into the wings but these are actually not the wings so if you see this the hand you can see the bones and these are the five digits and these five digits they are length is enormously developed and in within that finger you will found a membrane of the skin which is known as a patagium and as the patagium is highly developed in between the digits 
not only that in between the digit but this patagium is continuous with that of the forelimb and the hind limb or joining the forelimb with that of the hind limb so that they are going to form a some sort of the wing like structure and hence they can able to uh, fly into the air so here have a large ear pinna so here if you see the uh, ear pinna so ear pinna is also long as these are the nocturnal organism so the vision is very uh, poor so usually these bats they and uh, they navigate using the echolocation okay so uh, and for that purpose the equation uh, location for perceiving the sound they are provided with a large ear pinna which are the ex uh, reasons for the order chiroptera then genus is cynopterus okay cynopterus in marathi is known as what wagur okay this is a fruit bat very common fruit bat now this fruit bat of the cynopterus is fruit eating bat is also known as a flying foxes as they have fox like head so if you see the head the head is very much resembles with that of the fox and hence they are known as a flying fox they are provided with a long snout and the large eyes it measures about 30 cm in length and with 1.5 meters of the wingspan so wingspan is considerably large due to the presence of large highly developed patagium so obviously being they are the mammal if you see the body the body is always provided with a brown fur which is actually the hairs then molars are marked with the longitudinal grooves and not they are not uh, tubercular the short rudimentary tail is present so tail is very short among this bat then first finger is free from that of the patagium so here you can see that this is a first finger so in the diagram you can see that this is one of the first finger so which is completely separated or the free from the patagium but if you see the rest of the four digits or the four fingers they are provided with a highly developed patagium so first and second finger they are bearing a claw so claws are present only on the first as well as second digit so here you can see the first claw and second claw so remaining digits and digit number 3 4 and 5 they are generally lacking the claws so these are few characteristic features of the fruit eating bat which is known as the cynopterus that is the scientific name so here with we have completed with our this practical i hope all of you understand the general characteristic features of the mammalia and we have learned the three animals that is ratus ratus commonly known as a rat then sorex which is commonly known as a shrew and cynopterus commonly known as a bat for their classification so thank you thank you very much